Hello travelers, I'm Chris. Welcome to Lorespire. In this video, we're going to be showing you the location of all 12 underwater resource caves. We'll be showing you them by coordinates. We'll be showing you the areas outside of the cave entrances so that you can more easily find them. We'll show you the areas inside of the caves so that you can see what they are like and so that you'll know what resources are available as well as which caves have explorer's notes. This video will have chapters, so feel free to skip ahead to whichever chapter helps you out the most. We'll start out with the map locations of all the caves with their coordinates, and then from there we'll move on to the individual caves, their locations, and what they are like. Now before we get too far into the cave locations via map coordinates, there is a discrepancy between the two different maps here for the island, and I want to explain that just so that you'll understand. This map right here is the map that I'm going to call the interactive map. You access it by pressing M twice. And from this map, you can actually add waypoints and do different things like that. The other map is the quick access map. You access this map by pressing M once. And I want to show you that the latitude and longitude for this map are different from the interactive map. You can see we're at 85.8 by 92.1. However, if we switch to the interactive map and we zoom in, we can see that we're at 91.7 by 99.1. Two very different coordinates. So if you're ever looking up coordinates for something in Ark Survival Ascended and you aren't able to find what the coordinates are supposed to be showing, try looking at whichever of the maps you're not using and maybe the coordinates will be right on that map. Now anyways, the coordinates that I'm giving you should be good for this interactive map. And because they're good on this map, you can take the coordinate, you can open up the waypoints down here, you can hit the plus sign, add the coordinates here, name it, make it whatever color you want, hit accept, and it will show up on your map. And then all you have to do is move to that waypoint. Now, once a waypoint shows up on the map here, even though it is the interactive map, if you open up the quick access map, you'll see that it shows up in the right spot here. So just enter the coordinates as a waypoint on this interactive map, and it should show up at the right spot on both maps. Hopefully all that made sense. Now let's go ahead and get along to what the coordinates actually are. And we're going to be starting with the Eastern Small Pearl Cave, which is right here. And we're going to go counterclockwise all the way around, ending with this one. Okay, so the coordinates will be showing up on screen in that order, from here to here to here, and so on and so forth, all the way around to this one. Now that we've covered all the cave locations on the map by latitude and longitude, let's go ahead and take a look at the gear that we'll need. And then after that, I'm going to show you the area around each cave entrance as well as the inside of the cave itself, just so that you can get a better idea of what the cave is like and of how to find it. So the first thing you'll want is a set of scuba gear. Now essential, of course, is, an, is a scuba air tank. Uh, less essential are flippers, although they are a good idea anytime you're in the water. And if you have insulation issues while you're in the water, then you'll want some scuba pants. We have pretty high fortitude, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, you can also use an otter if you need extra insulation help. And then the last thing would be a scuba mask. You can see that the ocean's pretty dark and murky. You can't see much, but if you put on a scuba mask... You can see a lot more it's still pretty murky so if you're having trouble being able to find a cave entrance or just being able to navigate the waters because of how murky it is there's actually a command prompt that you can use so if you press the tilde key found above the tab button on the left side of your keyboard it'll actually bring up this command prompt line and you can type in r dot volumetric fog space zero that's R dot volumetric fog space zero. And whenever you type that in, it'll clear everything up uh, just like that. 
Now, fair warning, for me at least, uh, that will sometimes crash my game, but it does make the oceans much, much easier to navigate. Okay, so just as an FYI, I did crash after using the volumetric fog command that I showed you. So we've actually logged back in. I've used the command once again, but just uh, as an FYI, I moved all my settings from epic to medium which i do believe with the uh, volumetric fog should keep us from crashing and allow us to see in the ocean so here we have a top down view of kurt first cave that we're going to visit you can see it right here on the map it's at these coordinates and it's going to be right there in that clumping of kelp against the rock wall And this is one of the cave entrances that's pretty small. Even with an anglerfish, you can't actually quite fit up in here. So just be aware that uh, whatever mount you bring, you will have to leave outside by itself. But anyways, you get inside of here. And if you're able to bring an anglerfish because you have cryopods, then you should be able to grab a few pearls with the anglerfish. You'll see the clams and whatnot up here. And if you just harvest by the shore side like this, you'll be able to collect some of them. Now, I do want to point out that we do have our um, harvest settings amped up a little bit, so you probably won't get that many pearls per clam. But you can definitely get more with an anglerfish than you'd be able to by gathering them any other way. As you can see, there are definitely clams here. There's also fiber that you can collect. There are oil nodes, and this one has crystal, as well as a note. The next cave we'll visit is this one right here at these coordinates. And here's kind of a top-down view again. The cave's going to be right there in that group of kelp, all the way at the bottom against the rock wall. There it is. This one has a much larger entrance, as you can tell. You can actually fit a Basilosaurus in here. I would like to point out that the Basilosaurus does take damage whenever it's this low in the ocean, but it's a very minimal amount of damage relative to its max HP. As you can see, this cave has plenty of clowns, allowing you to collect pearls. Of course, you can collect fiber in this cave as well. It's got oil nodes so that you can grab oil. Uh, plenty of crystal, another explorer's note, as you can see there. And it does kind of twist upwards, making a spiral here. The next one is up here in the northeast corner. And the entrance is going to be down here among the glowing vegetation. You can definitely fit a Basilosaur in here. Although this one doesn't seem to have much in the way of uh, pearls that you can harvest with an anglerfish. You can see here it does still have oil. We have crystals. You can get fiber, of course. And even though this shows clamshells and seems like it should have pearls, I was not able to harvest these. Now there is, of course, an explorer's note here. Next, we'll be hitting this cave at these coordinates right here. Okay, from the top-down view, you can see the entrance to the cave pretty much straight ahead of us. And even though it's a pretty tight fit, you can actually fit a Basilosaur in here. If you bring an anglerfish, you can, of course, harvest pearls here on the edge, no problem. There's a pretty good number of them in here. 
Now on the land of the cave, you can see that we have a couple of oil nodes. We have some crystal available. There is a note, an explorer's note right there. And there's a little bit of space, not a whole lot. Next up, we have this cave right here. Here's your kind of top down view. And you can see the cave entrance right there. Notice as we're coming down, there are actually clamshells outside of the cave. So this one not only has a good number of pearls inside, but in the surrounding area, you can also pick up a few outside of the cave. Entrance is plenty big enough. You can see here that there are actually a ton of pearls to harvest. This cave despite being so small, might actually have the most harvestable pearls, especially whenever you include the nodes that are outside the cave entrance. Now once you get up on land here, there are a few oil nodes, a little bit of crystal, And here is the explorer's note for this cave. Okay, here's a top-down view for the next uh, cave that we'll be visiting. And it's this one right here at this latitude longitude. Just kind of below this iceberg. And right there we're headed straight at the entrance. Basilosaur fits in quite nicely. As you can see, pearls are harvestable. And unlike some of the pearls in some of the caves, you can actually harvest these by hand. Now there's our explorer's note. We have some crystals. We have some oil. Next up, we'll be traveling to this cave right here on the western side of the map. Here's kind of a top-down view. The cave entrance is going to be right there behind that glowing vegetation up against the rock face. And you can fit a Basilosaurus in here. Your anglerfish can pop out to pick up quite a few pearls here, which is also nice. Just go along the edge like normal. And then whenever you get up on land, you'll see there's plenty of sources of fiber. There's oil, there's crystals. And right here, there's an explorer's note here. Once again, despite there being pearls, you'll see that you can't actually pick most of them up, at least not the ones on land. Next up, we'll be visiting this cave here, down in the southwest corner of the map. All right, at these coordinates, here's a top-down view as we've been doing, and the cave is actually going to be right there. Be heading straight for it. Anyways, you can fit a Basilosaurus in here, as you can see. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Now, this area here does not actually have uh, pearls for you to harvest with your anglerfish. You can see that there are crystals. You can, of course, pick up fiber. Here's another explorer's note. Okay, 
here we are at the next cave it is also in the southwest and it can be found at these coordinates this one was actually the most difficult of all the caves for me personally to find. But with a top-down view here, you can see it's in the side of that cliff face right there. Notice the air bubbles that are coming out of this cave. Some of the caves will have these and some will not. And the ones that do, of course, don't have them all the time. But that can be another telltale sign. If you see air bubbles like that coming from somewhere, then there's a good chance that there's an underwater cave close by. Just don't be on the lookout for those only, because like I said, they're not always there. Now this one's too small to fit a mount inside of. So you have to get out. If you do have a cryopod for your anglerfish, you can bring it out and get some pearls here. There's of course fiber. And you can see an explorer's note here, as well as some oil nodes and some crystal that you can grab. Now the next cave we'll be visiting is this one right here at these coordinates. Here, kind of an up-down view. You can see where we're at. And the cave entrance is actually going to be right there in front of us. Unfortunately, this cave doesn't have any pearls for us to harvest with our anglerfish. But it does have crystal fiber, and of course oil nodes. And right up here it should have... Ah, there it is. Another explorer's note for us. And it comes back this way. Pretty decently sized. Despite there being clams, you can't pick them up even by hand. Okay, the next cave that we're visiting is this one right here at these coordinates. Give you a top-down view once again, a little bit of the surrounding area. And right there is the cave mouth that we're looking for, just behind the glowing vegetation against the rock face. Once again, we can fit a Basilosaur in here. Always nice. And there should be plenty of pearls here for us to harvest with an anglerfish. Okay, well now that we got our pearls harvested, you can see there are some oil nodes in here. There's some crystal that can be picked up. We come up here, there is an explorer's note. And we, of course, can grab fiber. Alright, here is the last cave that we have to cover. It's here in the southeast at these coordinates. Alright, here's kind of our top-down view, the area around us. And the cave entrance is actually going to be right there in the side of that uh, cliff face at the bottom, of course. Basilosaurus fits, which is cool. Get your anglerfish out, and there are pearls that can be collected here. So now that we grabbed all of our pearls, we can see that we do have oil nodes in here that can be harvested. You can grab fiber, of course. Then 
there's our explorer's note. And there's even a little bit of crystal in this one to be harvested as well. Quite a bit of oil, actually. And that's about it for this one. That concludes all of the caves. I hope that this helped you out. You should now know all of the cave locations, which ones have resources, what resources they have, if there is an explorer's note there or not, and whether or not mounts fit. Alright, I hope that this helped you out. If it did, please give us a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for more Ark Survival Ascended content. This has been Chris with Lorespire. Be well, my friends.